Hi, my name is Jim Moyle and today we're going to have a look at building a wizard with WPF and PowerShell. So we can see in front of us we have uh, Visual Studio open and just a basic window, the default window, uh, and we're going to start from here. So let's give this uh, window a name, let's call it the uh, wizard window. And uh, let's give it the title as a wizard window as well. So to enable a wizard, what we need to do is we need to put a form on here, a uh, frame even. So just drag and drop a frame here, and we will fill the whole window. Now, what a frame does is introduce the navigation to your GUI. We made that visible. You can see we've got backwards and forwards here. Um, <coughs> I don't want to use the built-in navigation controls, so I'm just going to turn those to hidden. So put it back to automatic. And we're going to name this frame wizard window frame. And save that. So how we make different pages appear inside the wizard is we add some pages. So if we add a new item in here, the page, and let's call this page title. And then let's add, we're going to put three pages in here so that we've got a start, a middle, and the, and the uh, end. And we'll just call this uh, middle. And then let's just add the final page. Let's just call this finish. Um, it may be very tempting to leave those as page one, two, and three. Um, but I've always found that naming these pages uh, as to their function rather than uh, just numbers is more useful because you may want to add and remove pages as you go along. And that means that um, it can cause you uh, issues if you just number them. So let's take a look at this uh, middle page. So we want this to be the same size as the frame it's going to go into. So, so height and width is 350 and 525. Excellent and uh, let's call this grid the middle page. I know it's a grid but it helps me remember it to call it a page. And <coughs> on top of this we want some back, next and uh, cancel buttons. So for this button uh, what we can do is let's tie it to the right and bottom and um, Let's call this middle button for the time being. And then now what we can do is we can uh, copy and paste. Oops. And now we have three buttons. And we'll just arrange that to the uh, given sizing on uh, default margins and stuff. So this button is going to be the cancel button. And let's call it cancel as well. And we're going to say is cancel is correct. And we'll show why that's important later. Um, <coughs> this middle button is going to be called Next, and this one back. All right, 
and we so we know which page we're on let's do a text block in the middle uh, we don't want to interact with this so uh, we won't give it a name but we will say that this is middle and let's give it make it nice and large all right so <coughs> Now our middle page has got a back next and cancel button, and we can see that in the uh, XAML below. So to make life easy for us, if we want to do exactly the same things for the uh, finish and for the title, then instead of doing the drag and drop with the buttons and the text box that we uh, just did, um, we're actually going to copy and paste from there. And because this is the title, we want to uh, control H and let's call this title, replace all. And then for the finish, it will do exactly the same. Control H and now finish. Place all. Okay. Now, for the finish page, we don't need the next button because that will be the last page in the wizard. And for the same reasons on the title, we don't want the back because it's the first one. So, <coughs> in the first uh, first YouTube video, um, I showed you with a single window and that had a single XAML file that we imported using PowerShell. Now, what we've got here is we've got one, two, three, four XAML files. And actually we've got five because Visual Studio is putting in uh, automatically this app.xaml. So if we want to use PowerShell to address this, how do we do it with multiple XAML files? Well, if we, I'll show you in a second. Uh, this script is again all available on GitHub under uh, that link, as was the uh, all the, the previous snippets. Now, last time we had a look at um, getting the content of the XAML file and changing it into Windows objects. Now we've got four XAML files. Uh, I don't want to type out that code four times, so we'll put it in a function. Uh, we'll put it in an advanced function. Now, one of the reasons for this is not just that uh, we're doing the same. Uh, we're doing the same thing four times. It's also that putting your code in functions is really useful because you then get sort of units of code, and and your functions should take all inputs as parameters. And should produce a single object, uh, a single object type as, a, as an output. And <coughs> so I'm taking one parameter, which is the path to the XAML file, and uh, I've aliased it to full name. Now, this advanced function means I can take multiple uh, multiple paths, and I've added a begin process and end block so that I can also take pipeline input. The alias to full name is that I want to pipe the contents, uh, the, the output of get child item to this function. And to get the full path of the, of the uh, file, the property name uh, that get child item spits out is full name. So now I've got the value from pipeline by property name, an alias to full name. Anything that get child item spits down the pipeline will get turned into a uh, full path that I can then use in the code. So, begin. I've set the strict mode version to be latest. You don't have to do this. Uh, I help find I help that I find it helps me write good code and and uh, I have less bugs when I set the strict version. Set the strict mode. We've 
opened up a variable for um, WPF objects and we've added in the uh, presentation types. So for the process block, this is the code that we saw last time. And it's effectively taking each path, converting it into PowerShell objects, and then outputting it down the pipeline. And all we're doing is then outputting that object at the end. OK. So now we've got a function that we know will take uh, pipeline objects. I've got the uh, path to where my uh, XAML files are. Get Shadowdown on that path and we'll filter and we'll get all the XAML files. Now, remember I don't want that app.xaml that Visual Studio put in, so I've excluded that from uh, the, the uh, list of uh, the array. And then we're passing it to the get XAML object function. So that will produce a WPF object. Hopefully, that contains all of the things that we just put into Visual Studio. And it does. Excellent. Now then, <coughs> we also need some logic to uh, go backwards and forwards through the pages. And we can have a look at this here. So, before the window launches, we want to set the navigation to the title page. So, when it uh, runs, it will have a title page, the title page configured, and, and that will start in the frame. Now, as we saw last time, here is how you add the click event. And what happens when we hit button next is we're going to use this window frame navigation service to go to the middle page. Now, you notice we don't have cancel here. Even though we had a uh, next and cancel on the type page. When we set that button type to be cancel, if you hit it, it will automatically close the window. So we don't need to add code to close the application when we hit cancel. And less code, the better, right? Um, <coughs> for the middle button, next and back, again, don't need to cancel. Next to finish, back to title. And then on the final page, we're going to go back to the middle page. And then the traditional show window method on our window, show dialog method on our window to um, uh, launch the application. Uh, the out null is there, uh, is to prevent spurious pipeline uh, pipeline uh, output. And we've got another out, out null here to do exactly the same thing. So, uh, my PowerShell ISC has just crashed, which is not very helpful. So, Let's wait till that restarts. And let's just make the text a bit bigger again. So I tend to find, actually, that with the ISC, if you launching uh, GUIs or several times over, then your ISC does have a tendency to crash. Um, <coughs> There are ways around it, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, perhaps in another YouTube video. So if I run this, and we can now see that we have our window, and the title is, as we said, a wizard window, and we have these next and cancel buttons. So if we hit next, we're going to uh, the middle, and next again, finish, back, back. Now, my navigation service is sent there. So let's fix that very quickly by going back to uh, Visual Studio. That's the main window. Back to the frame. And let's make that hidden. Let's save that. I 
hopefully that's made it yeah and then cancel on any of these pages will exit the application and that's all there is to creating a simple wizard with WPF and PowerShell.